this video, I'm going to share four ways to make your footage more cinematic. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing good. My name is Mike Hansen. I am a filmmaker photographer from Germany and I love cinematography. And by this, I love to create cinematic videos. And this is why I want to share the most valuable things, at least for me, that I learned the past two years that I am into filmmaking that helped me to create more cinematic videos. But before we start to talk about cinematic videos, we need to understand what cinematic actually means. And you've seen it over YouTube all the time, cinematic video from, I don't know, from any travel trips, cinematic B-roll, cinematic anything, everything is labeled as cinematic. But what is cinematic actually? Can you define it? And actually, yes, you can. It is something that is not naturally seen by our human eyes in the real world. So for example, slow motion. Slow motion is something that we see as cinematic because we don't see this in our everyday lives. So automatically, when we see something that is slowed down in the post-production, it has kind of a dreamy look and we just see it as cinematic. But you would never produce a complete film only in slow motion. I, I think that would be kind of weird, but you can see it over YouTube all the time. And I did it as well because it's just it just looks good, but you have to be patient with this and you just can't overuse it that much because then it's not cinematic anymore. And the viewer can't really connect with the person from the film or, or the film in general because it's not natural. So we definitely have to use cinematic techniques in a way that it is still natural, but it has this kind of dreamy look. So as I mentioned, slow motion is just one thing that I want to talk about today. I have four topics prepared that I think can help you directly to get more cinematic videos. So we have already talked about slow motion, so I don't want to go too deep into this topic. And I also think that we have way more interesting topics in this video so i trying to keep me short here slow motion is not equal slow motion so you have different frame rates and by this a different effect of the slow motion that you choose so we have normally in nowadays cameras 24 60 and 120 fps and i'm just focusing on these numbers you can have different numbers in your camera depending on whether you use ntsc or pal but for this video i'm just going to leave it at 24 60 and 120. So 120 FPS is something that you want to use when you know that you're going to not slow your footage down in the post-production for something like this, where I just sit down and talk towards the camera. And 24 FPS can be used for anything that you know you don't want to slow down in the post-production. It don't always have to be a talking sequence. It also has a lot of good purposes in real-time playback sequences that you plan in advance for your shooting. 60 FPS is something that I would like to use when I shoot people doing everyday life situations, just moving around and slowing them down by 50% already gives you a really good cinematic look. So 120 FPS in contrast is something that is even more slowed down in the post-production or can be slowed down even more by 25 or 20 percent depending on NTSC or PAL. But that is something that you should keep in mind that 20% of the real-time playback is really slow and can be kind of boring when you just show a daily life movement. It can be definitely helpful when you want to emphasize a specific movement or a specific scene in a film and then it totally makes sense to shoot in 120 FPS. But I also like to shoot 120 FPS when it rains, it snows or you just want to capture something of nature where you know this is looking good in real slow motion. But as I mentioned before, this is just a quick overview about the frame rates. And if you're interested in what frame rates I choose for my travel videos, make sure to check out this video afterwards. And also breaking the rules can lead to awesome results as well, but you should definitely do it with intention. So you would be better prepared if you actually know what you want to do in post-production. And as much as I love the autofocus of my Sony a7 III, manual focus can really help you getting more cinematic videos. And I recently saw this post on Instagram comparing cinematography with videography. And there it just showed a picture where uh, you have a build-out rig versus just your camera. And yeah, sure, a build-out rig with all these 
manual focus systems it really helps you to get more cinematic shots or to just uh, capture these shots easier but you can also do it only with your camera as well and the videos that you can see here in the background or in the overlay um, are actually shot only with my camera and the Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter on or sometimes for some shots I use the 17 to 28 millimeter Tamron f2.8 as well but I had nothing else I only had my camera no gimbal no monitor no nothing no manual focus system i just really had my camera with me no camera strap actually and it is possible to get some really nice results with that as well but why do i think that manual focus helps you to capture more cinematic videos i believe that if you have in mind that you only have manual focus you're going to record the scenes in a different way because you can move your camera as you would with your normal autofocus system. Honestly, this helped me to improve my camera movements as well because when I first started out with video, I had no idea at all how I should move my camera. It was just something that was so unnormal or unnatural in my mind and I, <laughs> I really figured out how to, how to move the camera and it was so weird. I can't even describe how, how I felt in the beginning. So yeah, I definitely think that manual focus can help you getting more cinematic videos and just playing around with focus poles. But actually I had something else on my camera when I filmed these sequences, which is my filter that I have on my camera right now as well, but in kind of a different way. But let me show you what I mean. So most of the examples that you just saw were filmed with my Freewell filter system on and this video is not sponsored by Freewell but they did send this filter system out to me and I tested it for two months and want to give you a real feedback what I think about this filter and if I would recommend it or not. And obviously for the purpose of this video telling you if this filter system actually helped you to get more cinematic videos. The Freewell Magnetic Filter System is not only a variable ND filter with a 2 to 5 stop and 6 to 9 stop option, but also contains two different base plates, a normal VND base which equals an ND stop of 1 and another VND X mist base which adds a more cinematic flair to your image. The blacks are more washed out and especially with lights in the frame you will get a nice dreamy look. So I would definitely say that this filter system helps you to create more cinematic videos and I absolutely love this filter system so I would definitely recommend you to get one as well. But it is also possible to get similar results without this specific filter system. Anyways, if you have the money and want to invest in your career, I'll leave you a link down below and you can just buy your own filter system as well. And I think that it sure do help you to create more cinematic videos. But if you don't want to invest in another filter system, the last tip is for you. But actually, the last tip is also for you if you want to invest in another filter system because this actually makes a huge difference. So yeah, just keep on watching. So I'm convinced that color grading and editing makes a huge difference and actually is the most important part of this whole process to create more cinematic videos. Sure, if you only record crap videos, you can't really do something with this in a post-production, but if you give the same video material to a pro editor and a beginner editor, I am 100% convinced that you will get two completely different videos. And that is because not only how the pro editor is building up the timeline, but also how they color grade the videos and also the sound design that they use or overall the story that they built out of this material that they got. And this whole post-production topic is so deep. I could do an online course probably about this and talking hours for hours about this, but I just want to give you the feeling for what to do to get more cinematic videos. And my tips right now here is actually that you in your own software figure out how to get these results. And I like to play around with the shadows and make them a little bit more greenish and put on a little grain afterwards. And yeah, I think already just listening to this topic helps you to create more cinematic videos because these are these small adjustments that actually make a huge difference. So if you're interested in getting more into the cinematography, there are tons of videos about that and actually that you're just watching this video helps you already to get more into this topic. I haven't really talked about one super super important topic which is lighting because I haven't really a lot of experience when it comes to using big lights. I only have this 50 euro Amazon light. I don't even know the brand 
but this helps me to create more YouTube videos. I decided to go out and use the most beautiful light that we have, the sun. Yeah, but I decided to not go too deep into this topic of light in this video. Maybe this is a video for another day. If you're interested in that, leave me a comment down below and I would love to create one about this. With this said, I leave you a playlist that I created for my setup that I use, as well as the camera movements, how I decide to choose which frame rates and the post-production that I do for all my videos. So if you're interested in that, definitely check that out now. And I hope you enjoyed today's video, that it was helpful for you. And if so, please make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel because it would actually support me a lot. And if you did it, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.